Hey there, welcome to my studio in New York City. I'm Daniel Norton, and today we're gonna to talk about editing your images to find the very best one. If you're interested in videos like this or about philosophy of photography, technique, stuff like that, go ahead, subscribe, ring the bell, and let's get to it. So if you've watched any of my videos where I kind of go through and edit these AMA videos, and if you haven't, then join us for the next one. The chat's really fun. Um, I have a, a certain process I go through. So I'm gonna kind of, sometimes it's not always easily apparent on the surface. So I'm gonna walk through a little bit of how I edit through the images and this may help you. Number one, when you're editing images, you want to do it, or I find it's very easy, easier to do it in a subtractive way. That is, I'm not looking for the best image as I'm going through. I'm looking for images that don't meet a certain criteria and removing them. What I'll have in the end is the best image, right? <laughs> so. The very first step is I'm gonna go through and I'm going to, I often do this in one pass, but you can do a pass for each of these. I will go through and remove anything that is technically bad. That is out of focus, uh, you know, completely exposures all over the place. It's a test shot, uh, you know, sometimes that kind of stuff, right? Just get rid of those. Second, I'm gonna uh, remove anything that is um, not uh, composed in a, a favorable way. This is going to be just sometimes, you, you know, when you're shooting from the hip, especially if, if things are moving around, this is less of an issue when I'm doing a regular portrait because normally it's not an issue, but let's say you're shooting something moving, sports, uh, street photography, stuff like that. I'm going to move anything where the composition is just off, right? Like you're, you're trying to compose really quickly, you miss something. So your composition is... Whoosh. Once I've got those two things removed, the next thing that I will do is I will immediately uh, do a quick tweak to see how it looks... Um, and this is on every image, so I'm going down, right? Every I'll go in and I'll tweak the contrast a bit to see how it pops. Because what I'm looking for is images that have a three-dimensional pop. So here I'm kind of going back and kind of looking at how I lit them and, and finding this, the, the frames where the person falls into the light the way I like it, right? Because basically, we're setting up a portrait, we light it the way we like it, and then they're moving around, right? So there's going to be frames where they move in and out of the light that's that's less than ideal for us. So we're going to move remove the ones that have lack of contrast, a lack of three-dimensionality when we add the contrast. Then I'm going to go through and I'm going to look for ones that, now this is all this is all technical, right? So this is literally all on my first pass. The way I do it is I'll do all three of those things like the first time I see an image, but you can do each one again individually if it's easier for you. Now we're looking at actually making choices, right? I'm going to look for connection because I shoot portraits, right, primarily in fashion. So I'm looking for an image that connects. If, if I don't connect to the image, meaning the subject doesn't connect to me, then I will eliminate that image. This can be that they're looking right at the camera. This could be that they're laughing and it just shows a great fun thing, right? Um, this is gonna be expression and it's gonna be connection. So I'm looking at expression and connection and I'm eliminating any of those that don't, uh, don't grab me. Once I've done, gone through all of that, that's those five things, I should be down to a smaller amount of images. The, at this point, these are all images that I would be willing to give the subject. And I usually do. I'll give a subject, if I shoot 100 images, I might give them 75 images. If it's, I mean, it doesn't matter to me if they have them. I'm open like that. Some people don't like to do that, especially people who like to do a lot of retouching. You know, but at that point, any of these images are acceptable. I'd give them to a client. The next thing I do is I go through and I look for the, I literally go through as fast as I possibly can. And I give myself one second per image. I literally have one finger on the, effectively the delete button and one, but finger on the next button, and if an image doesn't just grab me, I boom, gone, boom, gone, boom, gone, boom, gone. And I just do that straight down the line. I have had times, especially on challenging shoots, where I've done this and there's no images left. <laughs> so you just go back and do it again, right? Um, once I've done that, now, this is basically, this is what I would call the gut level, right? I'm going for whatever grabs me. Now, if I still have too many at this point, I'll do that one more time, and then what's left should be your favorite image. It's not necessarily the best image compositionally, but it's an acceptable composition. It, it connects with the subject. The, it's three-dimensional with the lighting, and it grabs you. That's really what we want, and that then becomes your favorite image. So you walk through this step, you know, remove any technical issues, remove any compositional issues, remove any uh, lack of three-dimensionality or bad lighting, right? Uh, remove any that don't have a connection, and then remove ones that don't grab you. And then what's left is pictures that do all of that. So hopefully that helps you. Let me know how you guys edit. What is your process? What software package do you use? Like, how do you do it? Do you do a similar thing? Let me know. If you haven't already, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, and I'll see you next time.